Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to do things a little bit different and I wanted to give you a little story time. So I wanted to talk about why it's so important to do a little self-care and how self-care turned into this magical journey that became watercolor for me. So we're going to talk a little bit about how I started uh, why I started, and then the art or the act of intuitive painting. So for those of you who are new around here, just joining, hello, how are you? For those of you who have known me for a while from here and from Instagram where I first started, welcome back. My name is Vanessa Lesniak, and I was... Before I was a watercolor artist and a watercolor teacher, I'm having trouble saying watercolor, <laughs> I was a social worker for 16 years and I worked in the housing industry, the low income housing industry. And I was really good at my job. I loved my job. I was a, towards the end of my career, I was a housing program manager at my uh, organization, my nonprofit organization. I had uh, some staff under me. I oversaw a couple of programs uh, geared towards low-income housing, and it was great. I was coasting along. I was doing my thing. I was, you know, being the manager of managers. <laughs> and then I hit a wall. So for most of my career, well, most of my management career, I should say. I was uh, a very big proponent of self-care. So I would frequently tell my staff that in order to do their job effectively, they had to make sure that first and foremost, they took care of themselves and that they were the healthiest that they could be mentally, mental-wise, in order to effectively help others. And I firmly, firmly believe in that. And I still believe in that to this day. Somewhere along the line, somewhere along my journey as a social worker, I lost sight of that for myself. And although I never thought that it would happen to me, eventually it happens. The big B, the big burnout. And if you are one of the few who has never experienced burnout, it doesn't come at you all of a sudden. It comes at you really, really, really slowly, really slowly, so slowly that you don't even recognize it's happening. And that's how it started for me. So while I was letting my staff know that they need to take care of themselves and if they wanted to take a day off to go to the beach or if they wanted to take a day off to stay in bed, pamper themselves, go to the spa, they were more than welcome to do that. And in the beginning of my career, I did that as well. However, once I became a manager and I started taking on more responsibilities and started not only helping clients with their, um, with their problems and offering advice and guiding them, I also started doing the same for my staff. And that was a whole other level of responsibility that came with that. So yeah, I, I stopped doing the little things that helped me to take care of my own mental health. And very slowly, my own mental health started deteriorating and it got to a breaking point. And I remember one day I went to work and I was sitting in my office and I was sobbing my eyes out for no reason. Well, actually, of course, there's a reason, <laughs> but couldn't really see the reason. And my best friend worked with me, she was also she is also a manager. She's still at the organization. And her and I had a really long talk. Um, and she helped me see that, yeah, this is, this is what burnout looks like. I knew what it looked like in other people, but I didn't know what it looked like in myself. And that day I decided, you know, it really is time for me to start practicing what I preach. And I took up watercolors, kind of. It started off by taking up bullet journaling. My oldest daughter was in college and she 
FaceTimed me one day and showed me her bullet journal. She was like, you know, I, I found this on Instagram as a way to keep me organized for classes. And I looked at it and I was like, oh, well, that's fancy and that's creative and that's artistic. And I've always been into the creative, the creativity, you know. So I was like, I'm, I'm going to start that too as a way to keep myself organized and kind of hold myself accountable for my own self-care and my own mental health. And I started bullet journaling. I joined the bullet journaling community on Instagram and I found my people. (laughs) I was so immersed. It brought me so much joy. And that led to watercoloring. I, I saw one day I was browsing through Instagram and I saw this one woman who was watercoloring in her journal. So I was like, I I think I could do that. I think I can try that. So the next day I went to my local art supply store and I bought the cheapest set of watercolors that you can imagine. And they were, you know, the kids watercolor, the, the chalky ones. And oh, they were not great. But at that time, they were great for me. And what started off as just this little, you know, I'm, I'm going to do this after work to decompress and to take care of myself and to effectively be able to take care of my family. What started off as that turned into what's happening with me today. And when I tell you that I immersed myself in watercolor, that is exactly what I did. I had no clue what I was doing. None whatsoever. I, it didn't matter to me though. What mattered to me was the act of putting paint on paper and the peace and the serenity that it brought me. Uh, When I first started watercoloring, this was back in 2017, 2018, I watercolored every single day every single day for about eight or nine months. I would say more between six to nine months. And it didn't matter to me if I was able to spend five minutes putting paint on paper or an hour putting paint on paper. Just the act of doing it was enough to help me decompress from the stressors of work and to more effectively um, handle my day-to-day because I was not handling (laughs) my day-to-day very well. And that's what started this huge love of art for me. Now, I've always loved art, but I never thought that I could do it. I never thought that I was good enough. And I remember in grade school and in high school, art was always, always my favorite class. But I never gave it much thought because I said, this is for other people. This is not for me. Um, I see where I am and I see where other people are and I am nowhere near close and I will never ever get there. So I will not do it. Now, that was my mentality back then. And I just have to say, thank goodness that I changed that mentality. It took me a while. It took me a really long while, um, but I did it. And I wanted to tell you that it is never too late. I was in my late 30s. I think I was like 38, 39, maybe even 40. I can't even remember. (laughs) But I was, it was, you know, I was a very late bloomer when it came to this. And it was just this awakening for me. And it was a way for me to relieve my stress. And let me tell you that I had no clue what I was doing. I started off painting galaxies or attempting to paint galaxies. And that is where my love of painting galaxies comes from because it came from the space within me. And I like to call that space like, you know, my intuitive space, this intuitive act of just putting paint to paper and it developed into something so much more. So my routine went like this. I would come home from work I would spend a little time with my family. We'd have dinner, watch some movies, do some homework time. And after my youngest, who was, you know, a toddler at that age, uh, went to bed, I would 
sit on my dining room table. Well, not on the table, but you know, on a chair (laughs) next to the table. And I would bring out my supplies, my cheap Crayola watercolor paper, uh, watercolor paints, and this very inexpensive paper that I bought. And I would put on some music um, or put on a, a podcast and I would just paint. Literally, that is all I did. What you're seeing here as I am painting for you, that's exactly what I did then. I didn't go into my pieces with an outcome at the end. The majority of the time, I should say, I didn't do that. When I was not intuitively painting, when I wanted to learn something new, obviously I went in with an outcome. But the majority of the time that I painted, I painted without the end in mind. And for those of you who are just starting out in watercolor, or for those of you who want to learn a less structured way of painting, then I suggest you do that. Put everything out of your mind and do not think about the end. Don't think about the outcome. Be in the moment with your paints. And it won't work every time. Sometimes you'll have a hot mess on your hands. And sometimes you'll have a mix of colors that just look like mud on your paper. But I'm here to tell you that that's okay. It's okay for you to have a hot mess of a painting when you're done. And the reason that that's okay is because you're going to learn from every piece that you make. Not any piece that you make is going to be a piece that um, is worthy of the garbage. It's not. Every single piece you make, no matter how bad you think it is, is a learning experience. And it's something that you should keep and treasure because it's a sign of your growth. I have kept 99% of every piece that I ever made. And if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of my feed, you'll see all of my firsts. I have never, ever deleted them and I never will. Because I started this as a journey of growth, Uh, inner growth and outer growth and artistic growth and creative growth. And I don't want to delete any part of that. So if you go to my Instagram, you will see that I have all of my mistakes up there. I have, um, and I say mistakes in quotes because they really aren't. I have all of those pieces that I hated. I have all of those pieces that I was like, this is pure garbage. But looking back on it now, it's not. I have a completely different mindset now than I did back then. It's not garbage. Because I look at those pieces now and they bring me so much happiness. Because I can see where I started and I can see what those pieces helped me achieve. They helped me achieve some clarity They helped me achieve some growth and they were all part of my self-care. Now, intuitive painting can mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. And if you Google intuitive painting, you'll get hundreds of different definitions of what intuitive painting is or can be. So I'm going to talk to you about my perspective on intuitive painting and how it has helped me and how it can help you. Because even though you don't feel that you are achieving a goal with intuitive painting, you really are. So for me, intuitive painting means, as I said earlier, going into a piece without the outcome in mind. Let what you are feeling and your emotions guide your painting or guide your hand. And it's tough at times. It's tough if you've never painted that way to get into that mindset. It's tough to kind of let go of the stressors of your day or the worries or the anxieties that you are feeling. It's really hard to do. And I speak from experience. I, I suffer from anxiety disorder and just being able to make my mind blank is a struggle. However, painting intuitively for me is 
a step towards that and that aids me in the process. So when you sit down with your supplies, my recommendation in order to kind of effectively get into the mindset is to make sure that your desk is clear of any distractions. Make sure that you have your tools around you so that you can readily grab onto them. And by tools, I mean your paintbrushes, your paints, obviously. If you have like a helix maker, a circle maker, some rulers, maybe a white gel pen, metallic gel pen, metallic colors, make sure that they are within arm's reach so that you're not taken out of the experience when you feel the urge to try something new on your piece. So that you don't have to get up out of your seat and walk around and rifle through your things to try to find it. Now, you won't need all of your tools every single time you paint a new piece, but it's always good to have it there just in case. So you are setting the mood and you are setting the scene for you to express what you're feeling that day on paper. My expressions usually come out in the form of galaxies because for me, or galaxies and nebulas, because for me, they are so fluid and the colors just kind of merge and I lose myself in watching the colors flow and blend in together and watching the paint dripping down the paper. Those are all things that get me into that mindset. And then the rest, after you've set up your area and you have all of your tools around you, the rest is going to come to you. And as I said, it's going to be difficult at first. It really is, especially if one, you're used to very structured painting, or two, you have never ever uh, painted at all. Sort of like me when I, when I first started going into watercoloring. I don't know what I was doing. I was concerned with, should I put this much water? What color should I use? You know, what what is this going to look like? How do I use this? But once you get all of that out of your mind and tell yourself, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you don't know how much water to use. It doesn't matter if you don't know which brush to use. It doesn't matter if you are mixing the wrong colors together and coming up with brown. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't because the outcome does not matter. What matters is the moment of you creating and using that creativity as an outlet for what you are feeling that day and as a way uh, to achieve a little bit of mental clarity. So everything else doesn't matter. But the beauty of this is, the beauty of intuitive painting and the act of letting go is that eventually the things that you thought mattered will sort themselves out. They will. Because when I first started watercoloring, I had no clue about color theory. I had no clue that mixing certain colors together will give me a, you know, a poopy brown, as my as my six-year-old likes to say. I had no clue what colors looked good together. I had absolutely no clue about any of that. And you know what? When I let that go and I just played with the color, eventually... It got, it got to the point where I was like, hey, hey, I know what colors look good together. I know that if I use pink and blue and purple in my galaxies, they're all going to flow. And even if they all mesh together, they are still going to look great. I'm not going to create mud. But I also know that if I added, you know, yellow in the mix of all of that, then yeah, it's going to it's gonna look a little bit funky. I didn't know that in the beginning, but I know that now. And all of that came from making mistakes and mistakes in quotes uh, and letting go and exper- experimenting and experiencing the colors. Now I know that I prefer to paint with bigger brushes. Now I know that I don't really have a steady hand. So I have tools that kind of combat that. Now I know all of these things that I wanted to learn in the beginning, that I wanted to know right off the bat, and I didn't know back then, but just letting go of that and focusing on the process 
helped me learn that in the end. So I encourage you to do that. It's one of the things that I love to teach now my students. Um, One of the things that I miss the absolute most about working my nine to five as a social worker is the aspect of teaching and mentoring because it was the one thing that I loved the uh, above anything else. It was the one thing I loved the most teaching young staff and mentoring them and helping them reach their potential and showing them how great they were and their worth and, and, and showing them that, you know, they have the ability to guide others and help others. It's the one thing that I miss the most, but I've slowly transformed my job as an artist now um, into that. So that is why I teach classes on YouTube and I have a Patreon account and why I go live on Instagram and why I love interacting with everyone. Um, These are just all things that just kind of came naturally and and kind of evolved out of that very first time when I put paint to paper. So intuitive watercoloring, intuitive painting, anybody can do it. You can do it. The key is letting go and trusting in yourself and trusting in the process. And just know that there may be failures. There may be some mistakes. But in the end, it's just pain and paper and you will learn something from it. And I hope that you learned something from this. So I know it's, 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 wow. I don't think that I have ever really, uh, (laughs) talked so forthcomingly here Um, but I did want to share a bit of my story and what watercolor means to me now um, I don't spend as much time as I used to watercoloring but I do make it a point not to lose sight of the process and not to lose sight especially in this age of producing content and making sure that you have pretty pictures and pretty videos for Instagram and making sure that, you know, you have the right lighting and you have, you know, the right paper and the right paints. I'm try I try very hard not to lose sight of why I started this watercolor journey, what it has done for me and what it can do for someone else who was in my shoes. So I encourage you to have a conversation in the comments below. I love interacting with everyone. And, uh, you know, if you're not comfortable with that, you can always reach out to me over on Instagram, email, however you choose. Um, And I would love to continue the conversations and to hear your stories and see what... uh, the act of creating has done for you and for your mental health. And I wish you all the very best in your journeys, wherever those journeys may take you. Enjoy the rest of this video. There's only about four minutes left. Um, So I really hope that you enjoy the rest of this video and I will see you all in the next one.